Taylor Swift is known for bearing her soul in her music, especially when it comes to love. Since her very first album, the Invisible String singer has continued to get candid about her romantic journey, turning each new love and heartbreak into art for her fans. Access Hollywood is looking back on her romantic timeline so far, starting with her first relationship in the public eye with Joe Jonas. Taylor dated the Jonas Brothers singer in 2008, but they called it quits that same year, with the country artist famously telling Ellen DeGeneres that Joe had ended their relationship in a 27-second phone call. Taylor is rumored to have written Forever and Always, Last Kiss, and Mr. Perfectly Fine about their split, but she seemed to hint in her folklore track, Invisible String, that there's no longer any bad blood with her and Joe, singing, Cold was the steel of my axe to grind for the boys who broke my heart, now I send their babies presents. The Bob Star's next major public relationship was with Taylor Lautner, her co-star in the rom-com Valentine's Day. The two dated in 2009, and Lautner has said the fan favorite song, Back to December, is about their relationship. That same year, Taylor was romantically linked to John Mayer, her Half of My Heart duet partner. Their time together is rumored to have inspired her scorching ballad, Dear John, as well as The Story of Us and her Midnight's track, Would've, Could've, Should've. Both Back to December and Dear John were featured on Taylor's third studio album, Speak Now. Shortly before the album's release, the music superstar told Access how she navigates releasing songs inspired by real-life relationships. Did you give them a heads up and say, oh, by the way, or are they just gonna hear it when they hear it? I think they're just gonna hear it when they hear it. Um, I've been really, uh, I've been really, like, secretive about this whole record as far as playing it for people. I've only played it for a few people, even my closest friends, um, and <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna give anybody heads up that they're, that they're the inspiration for songs on the record, because they're gonna know. They'll know pretty they're much. They're definitely gonna know when it comes out, so I might as well not, like, uh, give them the heads up and have them be, like, anxious for, until it comes out. Exactly. Are you anxious at all for them to hear it and maybe some sort of feedback at some point? There's definitely going to be some feedback, <laughs> I, I can assure you. Um, but for me, it's interesting. I've never been afraid of uh, telling the whole story right. in the form of music because I think that's just kind of having written songs for my formative years uh, when I was like 12, 13. Anytime I would feel loneliness or pain or, uh, I don't know, just rejection, I would kind of transfer that into, it's okay because I can write a song about this later. Right, and it's a good so outlet. I've lived that way ever since, and uh, it's just been the way I process emotions, really. Is it, um, is it tough sometimes to, to lay it all out there like that, or is that the only way you know? That's really the only way that I know how to do things. I don't think I would be able to tell a partial story right. or a very general version of this is what happened. It's just, it's just part of it for me. That's part of why I love it. In 2010, Taylor sparked romance rumors with Jake Gyllenhaal when they were spotted out together in New York City. But news broke that the pair had split months later. Their whirlwind romance is rumored to have inspired a large chunk of her 2012 album, Red, including the heart-wrenching power ballad, All Too Well. Nine years later, Taylor released a 10-minute version of the song as part of her Red re-record and turned it into a short film. Access Hollywood spoke to Taylor at the short film's premiere, and she reacted to how the song had become such a fan favorite over the years. When you hear the fans singing the song. It's really got my heart expanding. Right? It's insane. I love them so much and this that's what all this is about. Like, I'm just so glad they're having fun because yeah. I just want them to have fun this week. Yes. Because they filled my life with a lot of fun. This joy and everything. Tell me, singing these songs this time around, right? You, I've, I've heard you say that you cried through a lot of the press the first time you were promoting Red, right? Like it was tough. Yeah. <laughs> and now, right? And now, I wonder when you were back in the studio singing the songs this time, did you have that same feeling or were you kind of in a different headspace? I think recording it, uh, really it was going back and trying to create as authentic a replica of the originals as I possibly could. Okay. With songs like, um, with songs on the original album, I wanted them to sound exactly alike. Okay. Um, then with the vault tracks, I wanted to be as creative as I possibly could. Okay. So these are songs that no one's heard before, so I wanted them to be the best version. These are the first impressions of these songs. Right, right, right. So uh, they're singing so loud. I love it's them. It's so, so good, loud. right? It's beautiful. It's a, okay, so this, is, this song is one of, like, everybody talks about it being one of their favorites. You did a 10-minute short film. It's, like, written and directed by, okay. How did it feel to be on that set 
knowing that this is a story that you were going to tell, mainly to be a gift to all of these people who've made it something so special? Oh, it, it really just was wonderful because when you have a secret, like I love planning things secretly for them because <laughs> yeah, right. they're so rewarding. They do this. Right. And they show up. They do this. Yeah. And like, it's so rewarding to surprise. I can't believe they care that much, honestly, right. still. Yeah. Okay, listen, they care a whole lot. I've been online looking at some of the Easter egg and the, the connections that they've made. The one that killed me was Dylan and Sadie's age difference. They were like, okay, no, there's there's a there's a secret somewhere in there. There's a, a secret somewhere in there. Are they reading too much into it? They are. Um, <laughs> they are the best detectives in the world. Right? I, I love watching their theories, too. I love looking at... I like scroll TikTok, like watching their theories so often, all the time. Oh, I love that. I, so I love to just watch what they come up with because they're brilliant. Yeah. And also sometimes... I'm very into numerology. Okay. Sometimes... They find things I didn't even plan. Really? Math. Okay. 95% of the time I'm planning it. But there are some times when they're like, the math! And I'm like, oh my God, the math! In 2012, Taylor had a summer romance with Connor Kennedy, the grandson of Robert F. Kennedy. The two attended Connor's cousin Kyle's wedding together. And Taylor even wrote the Red song Starlight, inspired by RFK and his wife Ethel Kennedy's love story. After their breakup, Taylor was romantically linked to Harry Styles. Their romance is rumored to have inspired lots of 1989, including the cleverly named song, Style. There's also Out of the Woods, in which she refers to a snowmobile accident that she went through with an ex, believed to be the One Direction alum. While promoting 1989, she told Access Hollywood why she included that story in the bridge. With that part of the song, that was just something that happened right. in my life. And I think that, um, honestly, I think I put that in there because people think they know the exact narrative of the way that my life has gone and they think that... They know everything. They, they think that everybody who reports something actu is telling the truth. Every, like, source is a real friend close to me. When truly, the reason most of the things in the media about, that are written about me aren't true is because none of my real friends would ever talk to the press. Right. And if you go through something like an actual life-changing event and nobody reports it to the press, people think it didn't happen. Mm. But the truth is, most people are good, most people are trustworthy, most people are professional, um, and you only, get, you only get this handful of very loud people who are very gossip-centric. Over the next few years, Taylor embraced her single life and celebrated her independence. And she told Access Hollywood how she was feeling happy being on her own. When you've been through a few things in your life and you, you begin to value your happiness, um, when you've gone through times where you have been stressed out or, you know, life was more drama-filled. Um, when you're in a phase where you're happy and you're on your own, you're free and you're independent, you kind of protect that, that happiness more. When you've been through heartache and you get to a place <laughs> where you're like, I feel okay. I was like, I'm this good. Is great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm really good. Let me just stay right here. I think I'm just gonna. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna keep this going. Yeah. And you know, it's it's interesting how people will say to you when you tell them that you're happy on your own. The first thing they say is, Oh, don't worry, you'll find someone. Right. You're like, no, you don't understand. I'm good. Oh, but don't worry, he's right around right. the corner. It's like, no. They don't that understand is so the learning experience. completely <laughs> the opposite of the point. Right. Um, and, you know, everybody just has good intentions, and they think that in order to be happy, you have to have someone else complete you. But in certain circumstances, when your life completes itself, I think it's important to really explore that and then embrace it. Yeah. And you have to go, you know, I think it's relationships, too, that help us figure out who we are. You're like, okay, that's what I don't want. And this is, and when you go through hard, it's figure you start to figure out really who you are so when you get to that happy place you're like okay now I know how to move forward absolutely and I think it's also important in your 20s um, not to use other relationships as a band-aid for if, if one doesn't work mm. um, you know and I think people say all the time you need to spend some time to yourself and figure out who you are and I never really understood it until it happened to me and I woke up one day and I just realized I'm I'm in New York because I want to be in New York. I cut my hair short because I wanted to. I made a pop album because I wanted to. There was absolutely no one else influencing me and that, that was something I was very proud of. Then in 2015, she went public with a new relationship with Calvin Harris. Taylor described their romance as magical in an interview with Vogue. The two dated for 15 months before splitting the following summer. After their breakup, it was revealed that Taylor had co-written Calvin's hit song, This Is What You Came For. The songstress was linked with Tom Hiddleston later that year, with the two dating for a few months. 
Their romantic travels included a trip to Rome and Taylor's home in Rhode Island. She later found love with Joe Alwyn and embarked on a six-year love story. The two intentionally kept their romance out of the spotlight, but it was a constant theme in her music, with so many tracks on reputation and lover being inspired by their connection. Joe even got into the studio with Taylor, helping write songs on her albums Folklore and Evermore. Fans were shocked when news broke that the pop vocalist and the Conversations with Friends actor had split a few weeks into her era's tour, and fans speculated that her song You're Losing Me was about their breakup. Later that spring, Taylor sparked romance rumors with the 1975 frontman Maddie Healy. The two were spotted outside the studio together, and he even performed with Phoebe Bridgers opening up for the Delicate Singer on the Eras tour. The romance was short-lived. News broke a month later that the two had gone their separate ways, but a new man in Taylor's life wasn't far away. During her Kansas City stop of the Eras tour, Chiefs tight end Travis Kelsey tried to give her his number. He told the story on his and his brother Jason Kelsey's podcast, New Heights. I was disappointed that she doesn't talk before or after her shows because she has to save her voice for the 44 songs that she sings. So I was a little butthurt I didn't get to hand her one of the bracelets I made for her. You made her a bracelet? Yeah. If you're up on uh, Taylor Swift concerts, there are friendship bracelets, and I received a bunch of them being there, but I wanted to give Taylor Swift one with my number on it. Not right now. Your number's in 87 or your phone number? You know which one. <laughs> While he didn't connect with her that day, it seems that it wasn't long before Sparks flew. The two sparked dating rumors that fall, and Taylor seemed to confirm all the speculation when she later attended Travis's Chiefs game. The pop star cheered on his big plays and even sat next to the athlete's mom, Donna Kelsey. While Taylor has had quite the romance journey so far, it's clear the true loves of her life are her fans, and they love her right back. At the 2023 VMAs, she gushed over having the support of Swifties as she accepted video of the year. All I have to say tonight is thank you. I'm, I'm blown away. Thank you so much. For the